In the last video, we looked at using OBS to start to record our lectures. And in this video, we're going to start to look at my preferred software to edit them. And that's Adobe Rush. Editing is probably the favorite part of the producing the videos. And it's a chance to start to polish our videos prior to people viewing them. So in this video, we're going to look at how to use Adobe Rush and how that can be used to upload your videos to YouTube. In order to get access to Adobe Rush, you need to go to adobe.com and download the Creative Cloud. There is a seven day trial available for those of you that are interested in trying to use the software. If you want to use it any longer than that, it's gonna cost you 16 pounds a month. However, for that 16 pounds a month, what you do get access to is a massive cloud storage and all of the Adobe products. My personal opinion is that this 16 pounds a month is well spent. And for me, I simply buy one less bottle of gin a month. Once you have Rush installed, the first place is to head to the edit and preferences tab. And here you can select your audio playback and also your microphone. And this is important because you might actually be doing voiceovers in Adobe Rush as well. To start creating videos, click on the create new project button. And this will allow you to go into your media folder to select the media that you'd like to start with. But don't worry, you can actually start to add new media later on if you forget. On the bottom left, you can actually put in a name and then finally click on the start on the bottom right and everything will be imported. When you first open Rush with everything imported, this is the first screen you'll be met with. The large area in the middle indicates exactly what your viewer is going to see when you've finished editing or adding titles. It can also be expanded by using the adjust monitor function. And you can change your position on the timeline by clicking and dragging on the small blue dot located here. By clicking and dragging on the bar below, you can also change your timeline by doing this, you're able to edit frame by frame. You can also click and drag the small blue arrow here to edit frame by frame. One function that I really like is in the sequence tab, and this allows you to play audio while scrubbing. When you want to add more media, you can click on the blue plus button on the top left hand side. This lets you add any recordings from your recordings folder. And the button below allows you to see any project assets that you've added previously. Adding media is really easy and it's just a matter of simply dragging and dropping onto the timeline. You can also drag and drop media directly from a folder onto your timeline. And here you can see that we're navigating a folder and we're going to drop a title slide, which is a JPEG right at the start of our media project. When starting to edit in Adobe Rush, there's two ways to do it. The first you can do is you can split your clip, which is on the left hand side here. You find in the timeline where you would like to split the clip and you can either click on the button or you can press the S key as a shortcut. If your cut hasn't been very accurate, you can simply press Ctrl Z to restore your clip. You also have options to duplicate or delete the clip. One option that I really like is to expand the audio. And the reason that I like this is that you're able to see the peaks and troughs. And this really helps when you see a trough to identify where you should be cutting. Edit them and upload them to YouTube or another format. You can clearly see here that there's a trough in the audio and this would indicate where we could cut. By clicking on the control tracks button right at the bottom left, we're able to see more tracks that we can add audio to. We can also hide, mute, or even lock these different timelines. And we also have the ability to record directly within Rush and record voiceovers for our videos. When pressing this button, we get a countdown and we're able to record directly in Rush. And here at the bottom, you can see that there's a small piece of audio that we just recorded. On the right side of the screen, we get the options to start to edit our videos further by including titles. You can click on the more styles section. This gives you access to absolutely loads of pre-made titles that you're able to edit further and slot into your videos. Adding titles couldn't be easier and it's simply a matter of selecting the one that you like and dragging and dropping onto the above timeline slots. 
by clicking on the three small dots here, you have the ability to save these as templates as well for your future videos. Editing titles is really simple. Make sure that you have it highlighted on the timeline and you can either click the edit or double click the title itself in your timeline. Once the text becomes highlighted, you'll be able to change and make your own title. You can also change the font size, but make sure you have everything highlighted. And you can also change the text color by clicking here. Let's make this one black. And you can also, by clicking on the further options, change your background's color. So let's make this one gray. You can also change the shape outline to give your titles more or less impact. Moving your title is really simple and it's just a matter of dragging or dropping on your view screen. So let's start from the beginning and see how everything looks. You can see that one issue here is that the title screen we put in is not long enough. This is easily fixed by placing your cursor on the left or right and simply dragging to extend that frame. Now when we watch everything back, we should see that the title only stays on for the duration of that title image that we placed in the video earlier. The great thing about Rush is that you don't have to start from scratch each time, and all of your styles are actually saved. And you can press the star buttons to add these to your favorites. Once they're in your favorites, it's just again, simply a matter of dragging and dropping these. So you can see here, there's quite a few that I used previously in the videos. And if I want to add these, I just drag and drop. And you can even add a Twitter handle during your opening introduction. It's something that's been around for quite some time. And you can also add in a caption as well. And these are edited in the same way. Make sure that you have it highlighted within the timeline and you can start to type and edit these captions. And you can also move them by clicking and dragging. To remove these from your timeline, it's simply a matter of clicking and then pressing the delete key. Now, when we display our clip and start to play it, you can see that the animation from the title to me speaking is a little bit clunky. And you can also see that as I take a breath to talk, we probably want to start to edit that out. And this is where that ability to look at things frame by frame becomes really important. And here, using that scrubbing function, I'm selecting right before I start speaking and simply select the clip and press the delete key. Now we can see that the clip starts right away with me speaking rather than me taking a breath. We can then select the transitions on the right hand side. Using these provides you with a smoother transition between each edited clip. Once you have the transition highlighted and in the edit tab, you can also change the duration. I find around two seconds is perfect. Open broadcasting software commonly. There's many other transition types available, such as dip to white or dip to black. Below the transitions tab, you're able to change the color of your videos. But to be honest, this isn't a feature that I've ever used. You're also able to change the speed of your clip, and I find this really useful for when doing voiceovers of videos. By selecting the range speed, you're either able to slow down or speed up your video. By using the clip feature, you're able to individually make videos longer or shorter. Commonly referred to as OBS. I find this really useful if you've done a pre-recorded video and need to do a voiceover that's going to be longer than the clip. The next menu on the right gives you access to the audio, and we can see on the bottom the peaks and troughs of the audio file. Under the basic settings, you can mute the whole clip, and in the advanced, you can change it to select voice or music. So let's go ahead and add some music to our clip. And this is done simply by dragging and dropping to one of the lower timeline bars. Testing software, commonly referred to as OBS, is something that's you could probably hear that that clip was quite loud and you couldn't really hear me speaking. So what we can do highlighting the music is actually reduce the volume. 
is something that's been around for quite some time and normally is used by video gamers and content creators to stream to YouTube. So that sounded better and sounded a bit more like background music. There's also more advanced options to balance the sound or reduce white noise and also to reduce the echo. And you can even enhance the sound of your own voice. So we've got to the end of the video and now we need to finish it off. Using the scrubber, I'm going to select the last frame where I speak and split the clip using the S key. You'll notice here that I haven't actually deleted the clip. I like to move it to the frame above and I hide it and mute it. I then check that my clip was right before finally deleting it. And the finishing touch is to add in a final transition or another format. Sometimes when you're in the final stages of editing, you might get those really annoying keyboard clicks or sniffs or background noises. This is where I find it's really useful to zoom in right into your timeline. And you can see here that we've got a slight spike in the audio. And usually this will indicate a click or a background noise. In order to fix this, you don't need to re-record. You can clip around the noise, make sure that you've captured it. And then you can actually go into the menu on the right to the audio, and you can just simply mute that one clip. The user interface at the and what you can hear there is that we have actually edited out that one noise, but we haven't got an, a disturbance in the video. So we're just going to finish the video off and find the last point of speech and then clip using the S key. The final menu on the right is the transform menu that gives you the ability to change the vertical or horizontal position of your video. You can also crop and move the video and also rotate as well. When you've finished your video and you've watched it back for errors in editing, it's time to share it. And Adobe Rush lets you share it in terms of saving it as a file onto your computer. So we'll call this one demonstration. And you can select where the you'd like the file to be saved. And finally, you've got the option to directly upload it straight to your YouTube channel. You can also complete the title description and tags in this section prior to uploading. Before uploading, you can also set the thumbnail and have a final watch before uploading. When you're ready, click export and the process will start. 